I want to start off by painting a picture of a hypothetical scenario. So close your eyes if you want or stare at this beautiful scene here and imagine that you're driving your brand new car at night a few miles out of town in the woods and it starts to rain and so you start driving a little slower because it's a nice car and, and the road gets windy and, uh, and the trees get thicker and the rain gets heavier so you're driving very slow and you notice as you slow down around a curve that there's a, a figure on the side of the road, a, a person standing there. And as you get closer, you realize that this person, you actually recognize them. This person is your very best friend in the entire world. You haven't seen them for a while, but they're your best friend and one, once they actually saved your life from death. So you see this person and, uh, and say, oh my gosh, th there they are. And so you pull over to you know, give them a ride home. And uh, as you start pulling over, you notice that there's a second person kind of hidden behind this friend of yours. It's a little old lady. She's got a cane and she's getting no umbrella and she's getting soaked in this rainstorm. And remember, we're miles away from town. So we'll start turning in your head and then you notice that there's a third person behind her. And this miraculously, you can't believe it, is the man or woman of your dreams. And this is your only chance in your life to meet him or her. And so you look and you have a nice car and there is only one passenger seat. So the question that I want to ask you in this scenario, imagine you're there, is who would you pick? Now you have a very good reason to pick any of these people. And I poll people sometimes on who they would pick and I think it says a lot about you. Uh, but you have a very good reason to pick your friend because they, uh, you owe them, they saved your life. You have a very good reason to pick the old lady because she needs help, clearly. She probably has the less, least amount of chance of walking back to town. But certainly, can it be that selfish of a motivation to make this one sacrifice to meet the man or woman of your dreams to be happy forever? Come on. So, think about who you'd pick and I'm going to tell you the right answer. Which is that you should of course pick the old lady. But then what you should do is give your car keys to your friend make them drive her home, and then stay and wait in the rain for a romantic date <laughs> with the man or woman of your dreams. And this, I love this scenario because it's an example of one of my favorite topics, which psychologists call lateral thinking. Lateral thinking is this concept that uh, is about problem solving. And typically, we as logical humans, we tend to attack problems straightforward. And we, we approach problems the way that they're framed. So I frame the question, there are three people you can help, you have one seat, what do you do? Lateral thinking is about stepping outside of that question and questioning the question itself. Rethinking the assumptions or the conventions upon which the question is based so that you can arrive at a more elegant solution. This is the kind of thinking that computer programmers and computer hackers and MacGyver tend to use to find creative ways to approach problems. This is the Trojan horse. This is instead of attacking the castle walls, digging a hole underneath the castle. Uh, I studied in, in my book, which is called Smart Cuts, that came out a, a couple of months ago, the career trajectories of the best presidents of the United States. And it turns out that the best US presidents actually had the least amount of time in politics. And they came from, what made them the best presidents is the places where they came from allowed them to have flexibility, which it turns out is the key to being a good, uh, good leader. They were police chiefs and philanthropists and businessmen and war heroes. Those are the ones that did so much better than the career politicians who spent 30, 40 years in politics before becoming president. Then you look at not just in careers, but uh, products and businesses. The fastest selling phone in history came from a computer company at a time when only telecommunications companies were selling phones. It wasn't a huge stretch for us to make this leap on something slightly bigger, something slightly sideways from Apple, but that sideways innovation changed the world. And so when I think about innovation, I think about breakthrough progress, and I think about lateral thinking, it's important for us as managers and as people who are working in the future of work to think about how can we empower those that work with us to ask the questions that lead to lateral thinking, to question the assumptions and the conventions of this is the way things are done, but what if we took a step sideways? Is that we need to foster environments where our teams and our employees can ask the questions that are scary. They can say, what if we did things differently? What if we did things unconventionally? What if we took a step sideways? And I really believe this because when you look at 
the history of great breakthroughs in the arts and the sciences and in business, you see that no one ever changed the world by doing the same thing over and over again, by digging the same hole deeper. But also, no one ever changed the world by playing by the same rules that everyone else played by. You change the world by rethinking the conventions, by breaking rules that aren't necessarily rules. And so I think that today, we have a chance to break some big ones together. So thank you. Thank you.